The Bully Girl Magazine podcast is your dog-eared audio destination, bookmarking the most compelling tales and insights from the vast canine universe. While we passionately dive into the world of bully breeds, dispelling myths, offering training tips, and discussing breed standards, our scope isn't limited. We cast our net wide to encompass a diverse range of dog breeds, ensuring no tale is left untold. Enhanced by expert interviews and inspiring stories, this podcast is a beacon for responsible ownership and breed education. It's where bully breed enthusiasts meet the broader dog-loving community, fostering unity, understanding, and share joy in every bark and wag. So whether you're out walking your dog or listening at home, be sure to enjoy the show and keep coming back. I'm Lisa, and I'm so glad you're here for the Bully Girl Magazine podcast. You may be listening or you may be watching. I encourage you to do both because you do not want to miss the adorable pups on the show. And today we've got the wonderful Dana. She is the owner of Bag Baby Bullies. And she has a heart full of love for her furry friends. She's located in the Tampa Bay area. Dana breeds nano, micro, and pocket bullies as well as, fr as, well as Frenchies. Dana, I could barely talk because I'm just captivated by those beauties. Can you hold them up a little bit and tell us about them? <gasps> so I, my husband's like, you should carry them by their neck, but absolutely not. This is my, <laughs> this is my little girl. Um, this is Millie. She's oh five weeks. She's a Merle. Um, this beautiful is exotic line um breed and this is a little boy we named him miracle um he had emergency surgery he was two weeks old and he wasn't supposed to make it here so we named oh him gosh. um and they're a litter of five so oh my gosh they're so beautiful they're so beautiful you know, I always wish that I could uh, shrink my pit bull blue. I mean, he's not huge, but he's 77 pounds. So talk to us about what it means, the difference between nano and micro and pocket. Right. So um, there's several different sizes. So starting off with the champion being the largest, the XL, and you work your way down to a pocket size, which is about 40, maybe 50 pounds max. Mm -hmm. And then you work your way down to um, the micros, which... I'm still debating if they're going to become truly micro or nanos, but nano is the smallest size. Okay. Um, very compact, very structured. Um, and usually those, maybe 15 pounds if you're lucky, 15, 20 pounds. So oh, wow. How big these eyes are going to be because their mom is really, really small. Their mom's name is Foxy. Aww. She's 25 pounds. And the father um, is from Maybach, and his name is Carnage. And he also is. A micro and he's about 20 pounds as well so we will see um we're hoping for the nanos just because that's just what's in right now they like yeah. this um you could get to take them everywhere with them being super small like oh. that see i would love that and what about the pocket tell us about pocket bullies yeah so pocket that's actually my first bully oh guy she was a pocket she's roughly 45 pounds um, again, still compact. She's very muscular. Um, mm. We've Victor High Pro, which is a high protein uh, dog food. And it's mm. very cold. It gives all the dogs the right nutrients. And it oh, also nice. that muscular build that a lot of people are looking for. Absolutely. Well, before we jump in further, I want to ask you two questions. The first is, does your dog do something funny, interesting, unique? And you can choose whatever dog you like. Like, for example, Blue will spin like three times before I feed him, or Benji will always bring something to the door when somebody comes. Like he he won't go and greet them until he finds something to bring them. Is there anything, Dana, that your dog do, does that's interesting? Yeah. So right now, these two they actually who like little babies. <gasps> oh my gosh! Today I had them taking a nap separate from their mom, and they were right next to me sleeping. And I heard them, and they really sound like newborn babies. Very, oh. or, um, almost at this age as literally a newborn baby. And that really shocked me because um, they weren't whining. They were actually just sleeping really peacefully. Um, my pocket, I, she's hilarious. <laughs> my girl, like literally she's me in dog form. <laughs> is extremely uh, protective of my kids. So she's actually taken on my role uh, oh. or her mama. She is very protective. She knows when my kids are sick. She's my alarm system. Um, <laughs> literally being the head of the house and in, in a lot of ways, no one can get loud with her or me or anything. Um, and I think that's really interesting that dogs take on their owner's personality. Yes. Um, 
Sky literally is me in dog form. And that's my girl. Like, she already knows what to do. Um, so, yeah, dogs are so human-like. Aren't they? I know, especially pit bulls, I've noticed. I feel like there's like a person inside Blue and he's just wearing a costume or something. He sits like a person. He acts like a person. Yeah. It's so different than my lab. He's like, yeah, that's a dog, you know? It's, it's, and then it's just sad as me. Like, they can't talk, but they definitely talk just in their body language. But yeah. Yeah. And their expressions too. I've noticed with pities and other bully breeds, their eyes say so much. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, I, this next question is two parts. When did your love of dogs begin? And then when did your love of bully breeds in particular begin? Yeah, so I always grew up with dogs. I Growing up, I got a lot of my dogs from the Humane Society. Oh, so, nice. Um, so I took a lot of pride with that. Um, it didn't start till about a decade ago. And I was dating my now husband. <laughs> and he <laughs> had dogs. And I'm like, he must want me to move in or must just want to see me more because he's in love with these dogs. And I'm being oh, yeah. <laughs> so I guess his plan worked. That was my first bully with him. Um, <laughs> married with kids, raising a family. So his plan definitely worked. Um, <laughs> and I, like you knew what you were doing, but that my first dog, Leo with him really changed my perspective of bullying. I mm. always got the misconception that they were fighting dogs, aggressive dogs. And, they're honestly not raised to be that way at all. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Just because a lot of them sometimes look scary, not necessarily a pit bull, but just bullies to a lot of them because of the muscular build. Yeah. And then when they do crop the ears and do certain things like that, it makes dogs look very kind of aggressive, but that's so far from the truth. And I would say about a little over a decade ago is when I really fell in love with them. Um, and that's really kind of how our business came about. My husband and I are very diversified and we were trying to think of, What's a way that we can incorporate a family business that we're already doing on a daily that we love, yeah. most importantly, be able to teach our kids the power and the importance of entrepreneurship. That's so awesome. this has hit all the boxes and came natural for us, for our kids actually on a daily basis, be running a business. Oh, that's incredible. You know, I get so mad about the pit bull prejudice and I get so annoyed about the way they're treated. For example, I was walking blue and he is the sweetest dog. He will cry when another dog doesn't say hi to him. And I'm walking down the street and there's a woman walking towards me with the lab and she has him on leash. Of course, you know, we're downtown and I have blue on leash and, and she sees me and she's like, oh, I don't think the dog should say hi to each other when they're on leash. And I said, oh, does your dog get funny on leash, like aggressive? She goes, no. So I was like, Okay, well, then what the hell are you talking about? Because I do know people whose dogs act weird on leash when they greet another dog, but she just made the assumption that blue was going to be a problem. And I get so tired of that. And that's one of the reasons I'm so excited to be doing this show and spreading awareness. Yes, it's, it's terrible. And I say I would have brought Skye. She's a bigger dog. Mm. Um, she's so sweet, but I would, I would be lying if I told you that she doesn't look scary. Like if I saw her, I'd probably go on the other side of the sidewalk. So yeah. I get it be hard um it's never frustrating situation where she was threatening or anything no i mean blue's like wagging his tail and his tongue's hanging out there's no hackles there's no teeth there's i mean but i know it's gonna take a lot of education my daughter came home really pissed off yesterday because she's like my teacher thinks pit bulls are mean and i said well i'm gonna get his email <laughs> i'm gonna send him some stuff and then my, my daughter's like Mom, I want him to be educated, but I don't want him to get mad at me. I go, no, no, it's fine. I'll just send him a few things. Maybe I'll send him the podcast because, and he's right. saying this out loud to the whole class. And that's what pissed me off. It's like, dude, you have your opinions and you have the myths that you believe that are wrong. Yeah. And then you're going to say this to my daughter and in front of the class. Yeah. And then other people already have the ideas about the bullies. It just, it really upset me. So yeah, yeah. I'm going to send him some literature. Yeah. It's not <laughs> I said, yeah. Guys. Yeah, I can't help myself. All right. Now, one of the things that I loved reading about you in the BGM article was that you, as a responsible breeder, excuse me, your dogs undergo regular physicals. Tell us what they're paying attention to and what's super important for breeders to be doing, because that's something huge on the show to have responsible breeders that take great care of their pups and dogs. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I put my dogs through Banfield Pet Hospital. They're oh, a nice. So it's a lot easy for people that do purchase from me just to transfer all their records and everything with them. But they particularly work with a lot of bullies and Frenchies most particularly. So oh. is, for instance, one of my Frenchies has to get a nose job coming up. 
Um, no, I've never. Okay, you got to stop. The number one, I apologize. I forgot to mention. I think I read it that you did Frenchies, but then I started getting into the nano micro and pocket. First of all, talk to us about what that means with the nose job. And then also tell us a little bit about your Frenchies as well. Yes. So um, particularly some of the Frenchies, their noses come a little bit more squished. And my French that have Pedro, he's extremely tiny. He's maybe 10 pounds and that's full grown. Wow. Small. And so everything on his body is super, super small, including his nostrils. Mm. So when I took him for his eight week checkup, um, at the time, the doctor had mention of it and I've never even heard of a nose shot for doctors. But yes, this is very common with Frenchies because sometimes there's literally not enough room and then the sure for oxygen to get through. And then so they start breathing through their mouth. So oh. I was like, you know, we'll wait till he's full size, which he just turned one in May. And then we'll revisit. Oh, nice. So that's one that I've had to pay extra close attention to, not with the bullies, but definitely with my Frenchies I have. Um, as well as their elbows, um, how they rest. And you also will see... Um, hot spots sometimes on their elbow yeah. um, from the heat and just pressure. These are very high maintenance dogs. And so I don't think a lot of people understand the medical side. These dogs require a lot of upkeep, even inquiring just even with basic washes. They'd be washed every week. So sometimes oh, wow. two, three weeks, you know, without a bath with Frenchies, their coat in particular requires a weekly wash. Um, as well as that, just making sure they're up on their vaccinations, like these puppies, they, they'll be going in three weeks to get their round. They just got dewormed, um, which I just did for the first time myself, which oh, I'm like, wow. <laughs> what is that like? like? Yes. So <laughs> you know, medicine, it comes with like a little measuring gauge and with them being so small, they maybe get like not even a teaspoon of it. Um, and it runs through their system and it just clears the stool out and everything, make sure they don't have. Oh, okay. But usually I have my business partner who's a <laughs> in the dog business. Usually right. hands on type of stuff for me, but I really want to be hands on because I want to learn this stuff myself so that I know how to do it. Exactly. You know, I want to focus on the Frenchies for a moment. They're the number one dog breed in America after, I think it said like 13 years of the labs bring it, being number one. So I'm sure a lot of people are out getting Frenchies, but they're not really educating themselves, possibly. So right. if you can give us some good information, you just mentioned the washing, you mentioned the nose. What are some other things we should keep in mind, especially, like I said, because they're so popular right now? Right. So just really the food. These dogs, just bullies and Frenchies, they're very similar, um, are prone to a lot of allergies. Yeah. I actually have got my dog's allergy tested. The reason for that is I was seeing um, more shedding than normal. Hmm. And so come to find out, my dogs are allergic to chicken. So. Uh -huh. Really be careful with even treats. Um, really read the packages and really see. They may say wrapped in chicken or made in chicken oil or, or chicken grease or anything. And it could really trigger bald spots, shedding, um, aller allergies like us, rashes on them. So my Frenchies eat a salmon diet. <laughs> oh, with nice. Karina, well, yeah, I love salmon myself. Me too. So I had to completely switch their diet. And so we know that that calmed it down. Um, as well as just normal things that dogs really shouldn't be eating table food. A lot of people are this, but to have just healthy stool and the coat that you want, a shiny coat, you have to be very particular with if you do give them table food and how much you give it to them. Um, so for instance, my dogs love watermelon. So I may give them a little bit of watermelon, but everything with discretion, we really try right. to stick to the dog food and for sure bottled water. Um, so with Frenchies, just like these merles here, they're a lighter color. So maybe lilac or even a cream or a platinum. Uh, bottled water will get rid of uh, their tears. So it's very common in um, Maltese dogs, the white dogs, where you'll see a little brown tears. Yeah. That is just bottled water. So it's all the chemicals and the, and the minerals right. that are in regular water. People don't even realize. And I don't drink tap water. So No, I don't either. My dogs drink tap water. It's so interesting you say that because I do talk a lot about my pity blue on the show, but I brought him to an integrative veterinarian and she said, stop giving him tap water. And she told me, get this filter. It's called an Epic filter and it comes in a with a container and you can, you know, or what, or the bottled water. And mm -hmm. she also figured out that he was allergic to almost everything. So blue eats uh, cooked ground turkey, cooked acorn squash and peas, and that's it. And then she gives me some calcium supplements and some uh, digestive enzymes. 
He Good. rarely chews his paws now. He's not itching constantly. Yeah. There's such a big connection between what we're feeding our dogs and how they're reacting. And these breeds, especially I noticed, tend to be very itchy. And the yeah. ear infections, we're still working on that. That's gotten a little better, but that takes, you said it's going to take a while. Um, okay. So it can be frustrating. But yeah, I just, I'm so glad you're here because I, if people are going to get Frenchies, they really need to know, or bully breeds, you know, that there are some issues, like with any dog, but they're yeah. worth it. Yeah. <laughs> how they're human like us we're prone to allergies but they're very sensitive so i like to hear that you actually make them fresh meals versus yeah. well, i'm eating you know chicken nuggets and let me just throw a chicken or friend fry down no it's totally different when you're making your own meals for your dog you know from exactly without all the preservatives without all the chemicals yep. but i love to hear that Happy yeah hear. it's it's great so when you say salmon are you just giving them salmon or do they get like brown rice or some kind of grain with it I actually add um, a little bit of fresh salmon when I have it, fresh caught, nice. to put on top of it. And then I also do like a whole whole wheat, uh, whole grain rice. And then oh, like nice. A little stew, a little gravy over it. Um, mm -hmm. But I really try to stay away from fresh vegetables. It just triggers something in their stool and it's just a mess. So oh. I'm trying to figure that out. Uh, my business grew so quickly because we started out with just the bullies. And very quickly, um, we realized that just because of the the industry is somewhat very saturated, that we want to be able to be competitive. And how to be competitive is offer more products, more services, better quality at a better cost. So right. our demand was Frenchies, as well as the hairless naked cats. Oh, interesting. Yes. So our business grew so with the Frenchies, we're still new to that. So it's been a trial and error, trial and error. But thank God I have Banfield Path with us. just been so helpful in understanding of the breed and just really taking my time and doing my due diligence to really study and learn what I'm dealing with because my expertise is bully. So yeah. Frenchies is just a new phenomenon. And it's just so explosive. Like you said, it's taken over the, the I think, it's 30 years. I think it was 30 years. Yeah, maybe Golden. it was 30 years. Yeah, that the lab or Golden, I'm not sure. Yeah, literally. And so, you know, so just really staying on top of the, the science and the research with these dogs. Yeah, absolutely. Now, what do you do for exercise for your pups? Yes. So as you can see, our background. It's beautiful. Tons of water, tons of fountains, tons mm -hmm. of here, just parks, nature parks. So, so nice my area so there is tons of open land that's what I like to do I don't like to walk my dogs in my neighborhood because like you said the bad connotation of bullies so I let yeah. my dogs free I take them out maybe two blocks from me it's open land and they get to just run and there's water Aww. birds so I like them to still be animals you know right oh absolutely yeah so I'm blessed that I'm able to do that from Florida the weather it's sunny every day so we have them out on a two hour schedule. So every two hours, oh, good. Um, we're very careful because it is very hot. Um, so we make sure we put ice in their water. Um, maybe sometimes a little vanilla ice cream. Some are <laughs> <laughs> very cautious just because of the weather and the yeah. sun. But they love to be outside. My dogs love to sunbathe. And we just really like to let them roam free. So uh, even when in public, if I take them out, they prefer the stroller. <laughs> oh my God, that must be the cutest thing ever. <laughs> yeah, so they prefer the stroller than leashes. They're like trying to chew the leash. Like, if you don't get this off of me, I don't like <laughs> oh, I push. So, yeah. Oh that's my God, that's so cute. Now, what do you do about the super hot and humid summers? I guess they're, they're scheduled, like they have a little less time or they do, go, do they go in and out? Like Blue on his own, it gets pretty humid here in New England. And so he'll sit on the deck for 10 minutes and then he'll sit on inside in the air conditioning and then he'll, but he kind of controls it himself. He's eight, right? So he's older. But yeah. what do you do for your pups when it's like wicked humid out? Yeah. So my Frenchies actually love to swim, which is kind of- Oh my God, so cute. Having them jump in. <laughs> <laughs> swim. And like you said, the ear infection. So I'm really cautious of that, but out here, that's one of the Frenchies. Let me get outside. Um, so yeah, my Frenchies love to swim. Um, other than that, I try to limit them to 20 minutes, no more than 20 minutes, because we're on like literally heat streak down here. So it's not oh, yeah. every day. So no more than 20 minutes. And then I may let them still stay outside in the shaded area. Um, I have fans outside. So they say oh, nice. they prefer to be outside. 
I keep the doors open on my pool doors so they can kind of regulate themselves. Um, my pocket bully, she's big girl. So very muscular. And I know that she overheats a lot. So I actually have to bring her inside and she hates it. She prefers to be outside. Aww. Um, they get to hear the birds. Oh yeah. Wildlife in my backyard. So anything you need, bobcats, deers, foxes, I have it all. So oh. they, yeah. That sounds so great. Now, what are your favorite bloodlines? Yeah. So again, when I was saying to be competitive, yeah. you want so I've always taken my time to be very cautious of who we breed with. So, um, for instance, Mr. Miyagi, King uh, Giagi, Banano, Dax, all very popular, especially um, King Giagi and Mr. Miyagi, like the top of the top. And again, I had to do my due diligence and actually research and know what makes these breeds special. Um, as well as my Frenchies, I went more celebrity based route with that. Mm. Um the uh, breeders themselves just for the notoriety and also because I just loved the coloring and they were really starting to do color before anyone really was really going into the color but also paying very close attention to again that compact size so high and fluffy ox is where I got uh, my Frenchie uh, Blanca from he is connected to the rapper Kevin Gates so I oh, first yeah. her here and her father is King Ak, and I believe he was offered two hundred thousand dollars for the dog, and declined. Wow. Yeah, and declined. So that's who her dad is. Uh, and when I read the article, I was like, unbelievable! Like, there's a friend she worth this much. Like, there's <laughs> I looked at him and his gorgeous, a big head, almost looks like a little Teddy Graham little cookie, just adorable. Wow. Um, so, yeah, and then with these, like I said, Maybach Exotics, they're down in South Florida as well. I just loved his professionalism. I got their mom uh, from one of his bloodlines. So we went and breeded with one of his sons. Um, and I really care about just how people do good business. So he took care of us when we came down there for our breeding. I sent my team down there. Um, and top to bottom, I just love good business. He's very professional, works with his wife. So I love family businesses. So Me too. Is- oh, that's awesome. Now talk to us about, like, take us through from the start to finish to getting a wonderful puppy from you. Yeah. So I'm very careful of who we give our dogs to just because I do have them in such a nurturing home environment, especially with my yeah. children. So I always want to make sure that they're cared for properly. And again, like I said, they're very high maintenance dogs. So we require an application application uh, pretty much tells us about you um and that really gives me a real clear background of do they even have time for this dog you know do they have time do they have the resources because these are very expensive dogs like i said even just the dog food alone um and then once we go through that i'm very selective i go through with my husband we meet them uh we actually have virtual and in-person uh, appointments where people can look virtually into our kennel or they can also come in person and come read the dogs. But I really go off how I feel about the people because I care because my, my dogs can't talk. So of really care about where they go. So for instance, a lot of my dogs, they're still close to their So I always stay in contact with any dog that I've ever bought. Um, Blanca, for instance, is going to go spend time with her mom, Cookie, and her other mm-hmm. siblings. You know, dogs never forget their mom. So right. I keep it really close. Um because like I said, they're so human-like and it's oh, yeah. it dramatic for dogs to be separated from their mom. So we definitely wait um, to they're vaccinated and at least eight weeks old um, t- to be purchased. But we're really selective. Uh, I'm in no rush. Like I said, it's a family business. Um, we took even a wet a step further, added a boutique to our business as well as oh. mobile, uh, a grooming business as well as a boarding and pet sitting service. So it's really not about selling dogs. Whether I sell them or not, I love them and they don't, they don't bother me. So if I have 10 at home, (laughs) but I do get a lot of offers on them and I always care about, you know, how many dogs they have, uh, their children, you know, what's their schedule? Like I would hate for my dogs to live such a free life and, and be cooped up all day, you know? Yeah. Yeah. See, that's so good to hear. 
And what do you feel about what's going on in general in the bully world with breeders? And do you feel like there's the care that, that you're talking about? From people that we do business with, yes, we're very selective. I feel like a lot of people jumped into this business not knowing that it's a lot of labor. Uh, thank God I have my sons to help me with this. My husband, I actually have a business partner. Like I have a whole team. So yeah. doing this on my own, I'll never say, you know, I'm self-made or anything. No, my team, I have a team around me um, that helps me with this. So a lot of people jumping in, you know, uh, it's a lot of work. You know, it's a lot of work. And it requires a lot of skill and care, especially when they're this, this small and smaller. Um, so even just the, the whelping, it's a lot. It's, 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 it's no walk in the park. So, you know, I really am concerned about the care of the dogs. You know, um, I hear, I read a bunch of horror stories, you know, dogs being, you know, dropped off, abandoned, uh, even Frenchies in, in shelters. And I just think that it just grew really big, really fast. And a lot of people just, just just weren't fully aware of what they were getting themselves into jumping into this, especially in, in terms of being called a breeder. Right. You, know? you definitely have to be responsible because I'm very um, apprehensive telling people that I am a breeder because um, that's not primarily what I do. Um, and because I know the negative connotation that comes with it, a lot of people automatically think, you know, well, there's tons of dogs in shelters. And I completely understand that. So... I really don't broadcast that just because it just gives a really bad rep. Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting because I've always been rescue first, rescue first, but I also believe that people are going to get puppies. And if they're going to get puppies, let's send them to people who are doing a good job. I exactly. mean, I don't want, don't get a puppy from a, from a puppy store, or dog, you know, pet store or right. puppy mills where they're all stacked on top of each other and they're sitting in their own crap and it's, they're neglected. Exactly. You know, that's why I was excited to do this show because we talk to people like you. You are yeah. doing a great job. So thank oh, yeah. you. We, right. Yeah, we friends first because I'm so connected. So I just sold one of my boy Pablo um, to our friend, but I sold because the dad, he owns like 10 acres of land. Again, oh, wow. he can run freely. Again, very similar to the environment that I have. Um, wife, kids, very subtle, boring life, you know, like yeah. us. So that was <laughs> an environment. And then we still see our friends. So anytime we go over, we go see Pablo. So I always try to keep everything family friend oriented first. Um, we have tons of family between my husband and I. And I think especially for the older generation, uh, a dog is a perfect like companionship. Oh, so yeah. um, a lot of people in our elderly and our family, um, they own dogs now. And it's just so great because they just have a little friend. Oh, it's so important. Now, how old are these cuties with you yeah. right now? Yes, they're five weeks. Oh, five weeks. Okay. And I like that you don't let people get them until they're eight. Because sometimes I hear, sometimes people let them go sooner, but that's not right for the puppy and the mom, right? No, not at all. So um, usually eight weeks, we start taking like deposits at eight weeks because we wait. We want to make sure how they form, make sure they hit all their milestones. So we don't take, a lot, I know a lot of people take pre-orders and deposits, but we don't. So actually these two have pending deposits. Um but still trying to wait, especially with Miracle, because like I said, he had the emergency um, surgery um, just to see how he'll develop. And he's actually perfect size. He was a lot smaller than um, Millie, but they're the perfect size now um, and the same size. So we usually tell people to wait just because they're still developing. Yeah. You know, it's too soon. And then eight weeks, um, once they do get all their vaccinations, then we let them come meet them in person. Um, again, you have to be very careful not exposing them to anything. Uh, and actually like meet with them. So there's never been a dog I purchased without going to meet them in person first, make sure I buy oh, yeah. them. That's very important, you know? Oh, absolutely. Now, do you enjoy going to dog shows or do you have any of your dogs in, in the shows? Yeah. So I see my business partner. Um, he goes to the shows for me. Uh, our number one girl, she's absolutely beautiful. Her name's Elvira from Scarface. She's gorgeous. <laughs> Is, um, Mr. Miyagi, uh, King Giaji Banano and Dax Bloodline and her structure is just beautiful. Her eyes, her face, everything. She literally looks like Michelle Pfeiffer. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a be that's a pretty dog. <laughs> yeah. It's just the cheekbones, everything. Like she's gorgeous. Uh, and then with her being so compact, sometimes they can come off looking masculine, but she's still very feminine. So the curves, her eyes, just everything about her is just super, super pretty. 
Um, so that's our girl. That's our show girl for sure. Oh, that's so nice. What would you like to see happening in the bully breed world 10 years from now? What do you hope it'll be like? Oh, <sighs> Honestly, I would love to just see more humane side of the business, not so much about the money. Uh, again, I really shy away from social media. I have other people that run the social media pages because it's a lot of negativity that could be on there sometimes. Um, I just hate seeing animals mistreated. Uh, and it's almost unavoidable, especially when your whole business is surrounded by dogs. You see a lot. So I was yeah. just on the humane side and just not about the money with it. Uh, cause there's a million ways to get money, you know, yeah. and at the end of the day, dogs don't ask to be here, you know? So with us breeding, just be responsible, you know, yeah. all the way through. And if you do adopt a dog, know that it's for a lifetime. So, you know, whether a dog lives five years, 10 years, or you're lucky to get 15, you know, go the whole way. I went yeah. with my dogs, even my childhood dog went the whole way. So down to cancer and having to carry her, you know, mm -hmm. in and you know it's painful uh but just just sign up for the whole way just no different than yeah. that. wow yeah you know i was reading in the article too that you have a trucking company and you just you, you work in real estate did i read that i mean how are you doing you're amazing a team a team literally okay. a team so i started uh our trucking business in 2015 wow. uh my dad retired from being an attorney and was like a food truck outside 4040 Club in New York City, Times Square, making a million dollars. I think he sees this on the Food Channel. So he was like, we can't do I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> and, and then he grew to the 18 wheelers. And then uh, COVID happened, and I'm just so happy we had a recession proof business. Oh, and I just good. was uh, fearful of being out and the shortages and everything. And I really thought, you know, there's nothing more honorable or respectable than a truck driver. Everything. Yeah have comes off a truck right. after a train or you know a container everything we have comes from a truck so i actually went and got my trucking license you know no problem you're sick you don't want to work i'll come get the truck let me know where you are i'm coming so i took so much pride in that my family thinks i'm crazy but i love i love <laughs> i love it it's so just badass to me um in terms of real estate again a uh, recession proof business yeah with the economy, uh, Florida's booming. So that's my real passion, real estate, everything from design, architecture, interior design, everything. I love, I just love real estate. Um, and then our OTT platform, NGK Media TV, which is OTT platform, very similar to a Chubi or Netflix. We got into that business uh, by accident. Oh. <laughs> we started in events and concert business. And when COVID happened, we couldn't have crowds. Right. So we're trying to figure out how can we still have our productions and not have a crowd. So we were searching different platforms and we're seeing how much YouTube and all the competitors, how much they pay out their content creators. And the price was alarming. And I said, there's no way we're going to be doing production, having the crews, coming up with themes, ideas, putting on a whole production. And we're getting, you know, pennies on the dollar. So we said, you know, we're going to create our own. We're going to design and create our own. So we did, and we put our own, all our own concepts, all our own concerts, and we had the lion's share. So it just made sense to do that. And that's just technology. That's just where everything's going. Even with you and I right now, we're on technology. So yes. again, everything that we do has to be recession proof. So that's incredible. Now, when I'm hearing you, I think it's so great that you have a team. So if there's like a person who's by themselves, they're single, they don't really have a lot of help, maybe becoming a breeder would be a little too much. Or do you think it depends on the person's personality and perseverance? Depends on the person, but okay. it's like literally having a tons of kids at one time. So when I had... <laughs> <laughs> I have one and it's enough and I love her, but... <laughs> you know, it's literally like having triplets. Or, yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, five kids at one time, literally. Uh, and then having to take care of the mom. So making their, sure that she's healthy, that she's eating properly, that she's taking her, you know, multivitamins. So going through this, I would definitely say have help. If you are able to do it alone, I mean, you are Wonder Woman or Wonder Man because <laughs> at least the first, you know, month, you're not getting any sleep. 
you know, you're not. So I'm just so thankful that I do have my team, that we work together and we're all able to have a life. So if someone needs to take a vacation or take a break, no problem. Someone else can step in. But I personally could not do this. Absolutely not. Now, how many litters do you, does your do your dogs have at once? Like, I have no idea how it works. Yes. So <laughs> I, again, I because I love my dogs and I never want to overdo anything. So, um, for instance, uh, my last breed, like I told you, um, with Mr. Miyagi and King Giyagi, that's my first lead from their mom, uh, Star, and going to be my last. Just because pregnancy was so hard on her, mm. she is pretty, but she's what you would consider a she-male, meaning she, she's very masculine, she's very large, and she's very uh, constrained with just her energy levels. And pregnancy just took a lot out of her. I'll right. say that. And I just never want her to go through that again. And from her is when I got Elvira, which is the star dog. So I got my star dog from her um, oh, that, that can shop around at shows and put her in the shows and put her in magazines. And she's got to offer to do Times Square uh, runway fashion shows. So I got my star dog. So Good. mom can relax and just be a mom, you know? See, that's um, so nice. Yeah. So I'm really sensitive because it's no different than, again, us having babies. It's very hard on the dogs. And their mom, uh, Foxy, same thing. I want to see her back in shape um, and, and, and really get, get back to her normal self. Dogs do go through postpartum depression, just like women and everything else. So, so they definitely feel feel how we feel. I actually caught her crying one time while feeding them. Oh and that gosh. touched me. And I'm like, maybe I, because I play music, mm. <laughs> like sleeping music, meditating music while they feed, just to help them go to sleep. So I'm like, maybe it's yeah. the music a little too slow. <laughs> I actually saw a teardrop of her feeding and I just was so touched by that. Like this oh is um, embracing feeding her puppies, you know? So I'm very, very sensitive with that. And I don't, I, with her as well, I don't feel like I'll breed her again. I feel like I got my star puppy. From her. So at that point, they're just my pets. <laughs> See, I think that's so beautiful. And I yeah. hope that other breeders do that as well. I think when I think of like puppy mills, I don't think they give a damn about the dog. You know, they just keep breeding and breeding and breeding. And that's why I just say to people, don't get your dog at a pet store. I'm like, go to a shelter or if you want a puppy, go to a breeder that's reputable. But you don't yeah. want to be supporting these you yeah. know, bad breeding people. <laughs> yeah. You see what the moms go through after yeah. birth. The C-sections, they require C-sections uh, because of the narrowing birth canal. Right. Uh, they go through a lot. And so... I would never overdo anything because I'm a mom myself. Yeah, so me too. Bounce back from pregnancy, your emotions, getting your body back tight. It's a lot that entails. It's no different than a dog. And they can't talk and tell you how they feel. So you have to be very diligent and know your dog, you know? Yeah, that's such um, good advice. Is it going to be hard letting those two cuties go? How is that process? Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be crying. But you, I know you're giving them to, you'll be giving them to great homes. Yes. Yes. Um, two of our friends, another friend, excuse me. I'm oh, sure. <laughs> two of our, um, our friends, uh, actually the mom, she actually owns her veterinary clinic. So, oh, wow. A, great health. Uh, yeah. Her own clinic. So that's like a no brainer. But these were the, she wants a boy and the girl. So at least they'll be together. Oh, nice. Oh, I love it's Millie and Miracle. Yes. M and M. For all my dogs, I always do a thing. Oh, that is so nice. What do you like most about what you do in terms of breeding with the dogs? Yeah, more I just love that my kids are involved. You yeah, know? That's I awesome. Kids nowadays, they're so detached from the togetherness of family, especially how I grew up. You know? Oh, that's exciting. Wow. What a life. I'm just, I, I got to come visit. It looks <laughs> like I'm inviting myself. It looks so, <laughs> it looks so beautiful there. Well, everybody be sure to check out www.bgmwarehouse.com. If you like my hat, they've got hats and shirts and hoodies and all kinds of great stuff and check out the magazine, which I absolutely love. Here we go. Boy, girl magazine. And also be sure to check out the mobile app. Uh, you can go to where you get your apps, excuse me, and type in Bully Girl. 
And let's see what else. Oh, you can follow me and see my pit bull in my lab at Lisa Davis MPH on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you so much for listening and everybody keep coming back. Thanks so much. Thank you.